I heard David Bohm at one point, um, he was in a panel discussion and people were ask, asking him like, first there was no consciousness and then there was consciousness. So when did it arise? And he was like, yeah, I don't think that consciousness arises in time. I think time arises in consciousness. Mm. And you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Now all my, you know, mushroom trips make sense. And like, and this weird meditative experience can also be explained with that. Like all, suddenly so much more is is uh, knowable. Uh, mm -hmm. that you know, to be part of reality. And before it was just weird and you couldn't make sense of it. And now it's like, oh, it can hold it. And it can mm -hmm. also hold physics as a subset of that, you know. That's when I say yeah. the mind is able to understand domesticated mind, but not vice versa yeah okay interesting yeah so um so instead of life at one point started uh, everything starts with life uh, in the beginning life is like an internal principle of existence of, of creation you know it's at yeah. once and it wants the source and the process that continues I don't know, like it's this continual creation and it's it's baked into the nature of anything, you know, like like that things exist because they are alive, you know. Right, right. But uh, I, I I mean you're that that's a very interesting um paradigm, I, I would say. But I think culturally and historically, um you can also see um how, how people attach uh, a lot of meanings to to death, for example, yeah. Uh, uh, how how does that fit into this um, paradigm? Do you think like um, is 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 death just like um, uh, some kind of um, um, yeah, like something that is that that's not real or um, that that uh, yeah that is illusory or how, well, how how do you think that works? Well, the high level. There are different ways to look at it. Um, so if you look on the the high level, like cosmology, uh, and I mean no more than just matter, I mean like the story of this whole thing. Um, it's like the <laughs> I watched Star Wars the other day uh, with Anna, and and Yoda was actually talking about death, and what he said was like, um, "Don't be afraid of it." I've seen it. I've seen people dissolve into the force many times. It's a beautiful thing. So when you go back to the white light and the rainbow, is does the does the the red color die or disappear when it returns to the white light? No, it just like all other colors, it joins, it dissolves into everything else again. Um, so so death is gets a new meaning um but that of course like multiple levels because now now you get into stuff like i mean basically the same way animism was the normative consciousness for most of human history so was the idea of reincarnation or like or, or any like the idea that the spirit continues after the bodily vehicle um dies and again mm -hmm. it's like Prove to me that this is happening is one way of looking at it. But actually the more natural question would be like, like forever, ev anyone was talking about that. Um, so prove to me that it doesn't happen, you know, because it's actually the more natural assumption if, if yeah, consciousness, if time arises in consciousness and not consciousness and time, then this finiteness of it ends somewhere doesn't really make sense uh, so actually if, if you really if you if you let go of all the conditioning that the, the domestication that has been applied to us so intensely yeah yeah especially in our formative years um and you just open up a bit to this whole indigenous eastern like all of the ancient stuff like oh my god this is so much more coherent metaphysically speaking than anything we have you know we just get into the hard problem of consciousness and these, uh, yeah, all these mind, uh, thought experiments that you're like, it's impossible. Reality can't even work, <laughs> you know? And it's just yeah. like, maybe we have the wrong assumptions about reality. Um, yeah. 